Hello, hello. Seems like I have to test that mic every time from now on. Interesting. Hey, Tiber <laughs> Tiberian. Hey, Chris, how's it going? Hope everything is well. We're going to play some games tonight. I do have set up for tonight a simul. I'm doing great. So I have a simul set up tonight. We'll see how that goes. I have a new function I need to figure out how to do on this. Uh, there's two ways to, it seems to work this. So I'm going to see if I can do both. Um, so... I'm going to learn about that before tomorrow's stream with Sadukas. That's my goal. So, that's my goal anyway. Got some new commands I made. One of them is this one. And then uh, for tonight, I also have, I believe I called it, oh no, I, the other one for tonight is just on a timer. So that one will run every 15 minutes and it'll tell people about the Simo that we got set up in case they want to do the simul, but I will take uh, challenges if you want to play a game now. But I, I did want to go over a concept, and I can wait a little while for people to show up, but the concept was about how to find pins, skewers, and most discovered attacks. So since you're early, you know, we can start with you. You know I like to start on time. We're, we're, uh, we're definitely a get it done on a certain time frame. Hey, Brandon, how you doing? I didn't tell my daughter that you were, that we know who beat her on that game because she was just too happy. She she got revenge against somebody that had beaten her in 1800. She beat him twice, as you saw on Wednesday. Uh, one of them during the tournament, and one right at, you know, as the time expired, so it didn't count for the tournament. But as far as she concerned, of course, it counted because she got her revenge. She beat him twice, so. Ah. Uh. Okay, Brandon, I have no clue what you said, but I'm sure it's something just like, yay. <laughs> and all those moderators, they're so strict, way too strict. All right, so I was about to tell Chris about a concept that I've uh, stumbled upon, I believe. So you've, you've probably heard of, um, <laughs> you probably heard of the concept of seeking enlightenment, right? Yeah, that's, that's not good, Brandon, yeah, yeah. I got eight-year-olds, no, that doesn't work, yeah. Um, so yeah, don't, don't do that for eight year olds. Please don't do that. So, um, I was saying seeking enlightenment. So the difference is that we're going to seek alignment, not enlightenment, but alignment. And it might be enlightening if we find alignments. So what do I mean by seeking alignments? And, uh, we could go to almost any game 
that we've seen that have been played, or we can wait and while I'm playing one, I will show you this, how to seek alignment. But it's all about what is lined up with a king, what is all lined up with a queen, what is lined up with a rook maybe. And usually these pieces that do the alignment are all gonna be ones that go on a line. So bishops can align, queens can align, right? Uh, queens can align straight, diagonal, and horizontally, vertically and horizontally. Rooks do it vertically and horizontally. Now, there's three pieces. Three, A, Flavio, there are three pieces that cannot be on the offensive side of alignment. There are three pieces that cannot seek alignment. Anybody want to guess what those three pieces are? Yes, it's. I know we're just supposed to play tonight, but uh, I, I just got excited about this concept of seeking alignment, and I want to share it with you guys, and so I want you to take a look at it. Um, thank you for the offer, uh, MH, but if you're on stream, it needs to be uh, casual because I'm streaming, and so I don't do rated while I'm streaming. It's not fair either way, I think. Um, so, what do you think? Hmm? What do we think? What is a what pieces cannot be uh, seek cannot seek alignment? Ah, Chris, you're too good. Knight, king, and pawn. You got all three all by yourself. Yes, the knight cannot seek seek alignment because it can't go on a straight line with anything. Right now, knights do seek groupings. They look for pieces that are gathered together close enough in certain situations so they can double attack. Big deal, right? Knights are great at double attacks. Um, so, knights don't do it. Pawns don't do it because they don't have a long range, right? They can hit the first pawn, but they can't see through, so they're not dealing with alignment. And kings also only move one square, so they cannot do alignment all the way through. Awesome. Awesome. So every other piece is can be involved in finding and seeking and using alignment. And so the pin, the pin by nature is an alignment item, right? We're aligning through the knight to the king. Now this pawn is breaking the alignment for the moment, so it's safe. If the pawn moves, alignment is stronger. We castle and he says, well, I'll break the pin again meaning that I break the alignment so it doesn't get to the piece of great value. You'd have to remove two pieces, All right? So that's alignment. Hey, Spock, how's it going, bro? Um, we are reviewing alignment as a bonus because, you know, I know we were just going to play games and, and go over the items that we've been working on, but I, I just felt moved to share with you guys the concept of alignment. So another reason that this alignment comes up, and remember, it's, it can be in a lot of ways, a lot of times. We have a king here, so you can even say, I'm going to put my queen here in a line. Now, of course, that would be a bad idea because the knight's there, but you get the concept, right? If the queen is here, you're looking for alignment. If you can get your rook up here, it's alignment. So you're looking for diagonals, you're looking for straight lines, you're looking for rows and files. All these alignment factors are what we're looking for. Yes, it's like an arrow going through sandbags. Yes. <laughs> Very good. I like that, Brandon. I might have to steal that. All right. I like it. So why do we look? So we're looking for alignment. We're seeking alignment and we're seeking tactics. So during the opening, especially, and this is where we're trying to get you guys to be better. And I don't mean just better in winning games. I don't want you just winning games. I want you thinking, learning, improving. And so the way to do that is to one, don't give away any free candy. We have to stop giving away free candy. Can't say it enough, we're still doing it. All of us are doing it. We need to stop giving away free candy. And as we get away, stop from giving away free candy on one move free candy, then we have to start realizing when we have two pieces being attacked. So we gave Post a one-on-one -on -one lesson on uh, Wednesday night, right before the big battle royale. And one of the things that he tends to do is push the center pawn even when it's not protected. Now, this one is protected twice, but he tends to push the second pawn, the center pawn, even when it's not protected and just give it away for free. So that's an example of free candy that we're still doing in the middle. We need to stop doing that. All right, so we're trying not to give away free candy. That's the number one thing. The second thing we're trying to do in the opening in the, yes, unless it's part of a gambit, then you then you might be giving away free pawns. But uh, most of us, 
that we're teaching here on Muhammad are beginners. We're under. We're talking about players that are under thirteen hundred in Lee Chess, under some of them under a thousand on Chess.com. And you know what? We don't need to be playing gambits when we're first learning, and we're just getting the hang and understanding the concepts. So, but yes, gambits would be an exception to that. Were you giving it away on purpose? And in fact, if you give away a pawn by accident, just decide you get, did a gambit and, and play on. But let's get back to it. So no free candy. That's a big one. A congrats. No free candy. That's a big one. Next big one is to try to develop our pieces. I don't know how many games where I see pieces just never get developed throughout the whole game. And we attack with maybe only the queen, the bishop, and the knight. Maybe only the queen. I see people that just attack with the queen. And they just run all over the place with the queen until it gets trapped or lost. So we have to play with all of our pieces. We want all of our pieces to be coordinated. So what's the rule for the opening? We're in a race. And unless you see free candy or you see tactics that'll win candy, we're going to focus on developing faster than our opponent. So part of that is not to move a piece more than once in the opening unless provoked. You will hear me say unless provoked all the time because everything is situational. But we want to follow the rules, we want to follow the principles, we want to follow the concepts, unless provoked. So, we're going to move our pieces only once in the opening, unless provoked. We're going to move our pawns only once in the opening, unless provoked. We're going to try not to block in our bad bishops that we create. We're going to try not to keep block them in behind the pawns, unless that's the way we like to play it. Maybe we fee and shadow it. Maybe we do it here and keep the pin from happening. That's fine. But in general, it'd be nice if it was on the outside of the pawn. But we have to do it, right? You can choose to put the bishop on the inside or the outside of the pawn chain. But most of us don't even realize there's a thing called a pawn chain or that there's a good or bad bishop. So this is our good bishop because our pawns are on white. So this bishop has the most freedom of scope. While this bishop is by nature not as free to move. And so it is our bad bishop. Can that change? in a heartbeat. If the next move I move this pawn and move it again, ha, he's still the bad bishop. But if I move it, we trade it off and this pawn moves, hey, now maybe he becomes the good bishop. And if my pawns end up on dark squares, this could be my bad bishop. When we're talking about the bad bishop in general, we're only talking about the center pawns in relation to the bishops. But you could put all of your pawns on white and make this bishop extremely bad. So what do you do with a bad bishop? Hopefully you trade it off for their good bishop. That'd be a thing to do. Trade it off for their good bishop. And then it doesn't matter that you don't have a white bishop. But you can actually trade off this bishop for this knight if everything is on white. Because while this bishop has a lot of targets, unfortunately, he also has no room because your pawns are restricting his movement. All right? All right. Uh, yes, d4, I did say you could d4. Yes, d4 was great. But we're just showing about a bishop on the inside and outside. So thank you. And yes, um, Brax, Bra um, Brandon, thank you for explaining that. Uh, you guys are helping me out. This is awesome. You guys are learning, catching, and you know what I'm thinking. And you're, you're, we're on the same page a lot. I'm loving this. All right. So we're going to not give away free candy. We're going to develop our pieces fast as we can, which includes king safety. And we talked about this a little bit. The king can castle to either side for king safety. The king can stay in the middle if the board gets locked up and the pawns are all locked up and you're open on the sides, you might be safer in the middle. But the point is you have to consider, be aware of, and care about king safety. Now, the classic way to protect the king the best is three unmoved pawns with a minor piece hanging around. So that way you can move the whatever pawn you need to at the right time, and you have this piece to help out. But again, you could stay in the center and have king safety. It's possible. All right. Now, we're going to search for tactics. And while we're searching for tactics, we are looking for free candy. And tactics allow us to get ahead. So we want to take advantage whenever we can find free candy. I mean, right? Our tactics. And we've talked about a lot of tactics. In fact, we've talked about the pin, the discovered attack, the double attack fork. We've talked about skewers. We've talked about double checks. We've talked about um, removing the defender. We had a whole week on remove the defender. 
And now we're at less, we're on lesson 11, which is not really a lesson. It's a review of lessons one through 10. So we want to think about all those things. And why do we look for tactics? Because they help us get ahead. They help us win the game. They help us gain material and advantages. So we're going to look for opportunities for alignment, right? If this knight comes here, we're going to look for opportunities for alignment. We're going to look for alignment this way and this way. Where do I want to put my rook? Probably here if that king doesn't get out of the center. I'm looking for alignment. I'm looking for the tactics we talked about. Knights look for groupings. And remember, knights, when they move, they then turn around and attack the opposite color. And then when they move, they attack the opposite color again. They always switch color. So right now, this knight is hitting white squares. This knight is hitting dark squares. And so you have to know that when that knight moves, he's going to hit light squares. So you're not going to put your queen and your rook and your king on these squares because when the knight goes there, you'll attack all of them. You have to pay attention to those things. All right. Any questions about in general what we're going to be covering? And we're going to now, we just play games. And usually I play a one-on-one. -on -one. Once in a while we try simul. simul. I thought we'd try simul tonight. I gave myself a little bit of extra time just because I'll be going from board to board to board to board. And with my new setup, I'm thinking I can show you the whole um, simul situation going on. But usually I just go from game to game to game to game. And you'll be playing if you want to play. And if you want to play, then right there it is, the explanation of what we're doing and how you can sign up. And if you're not part of the team, you have to be part of the team. We like you to join the team so you know that way we know who's playing and if you have problems and you're and you're not really you know you're not a good part of the community have attitude problems you know it's just yeah terrible we'll kick you out of the team and then we don't have to worry about you playing in those but yeah I, we haven't had any problems in fact everybody's been super awesome that has been playing with us and working with us so far all right. Um, I'll also, as you can see also in the chat, I'll be doing my hand and brain with Sat Sadukas coming up on Saturday tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern time. And that should be a lot of fun, especially if you're interested in learning Spanish like I am. Uh, we speak, try to speak, we try to do the whole thing speaking nothing but Spanish. Only Spanish. Uh, doesn't work out totally. So we now we're saying it's Sp Spanglish because Every once in a while we have to explain things in English, especially if we have viewers that don't know Spanish and they're like, what are you guys talking about? Uh, then we might have to explain things in English. But it's, it's for me to learn Spanish and for us to have fun playing chess together because uh, chess is great. And I, I love learning and getting better. And Spanish is another thing I like learning and getting better at. So let's see if we have anybody signed up for the simul. Uh, if anybody decided to get out there and uh, I have two players. All right. I mean, we'll play with chess too, but... Hoping for more, uh, but we do have two players signed up already. Brandon and Chris, thank you very much. Uh, Spock, I'm hoping you join us for the simul. Uh, it's, it's unrated. It is stand us uh, casual. All of these are casual, by the way. Modern Ancient! I saw you playing some other game other than chess today, and I was like, what is he doing? He's killing things. Um, but welcome, welcome, Modern Ancient. We missed you. Uh oh, will it? It'll be our first game together? That's interesting, yeah. Um, and after we do the simul, we can definitely play some one-on-one -on -one games. It does. We're good with that. So we go for two hours. Uh, I start on time, and I like to end on time for anybody that's new to the stream. We It is basically a lesson, and we have three parts. I'll remind everybody about the three parts. So the three parts to our lessons are pretty sta uh, standard. They are, first one, we introduce a concept or idea. The next one, we introduce a specific on the, I'm sorry, we introduced the basic concept or idea on a Monday. Then after I introduce it, starting off on that Monday, right afterwards we have a tournament and it's viewers only. So viewers play viewers trying to, trying to use the concept we just talked about. So we've had lessons like on removing the defender, then that whole tournament, everybody tried to find opportunities to remove the defender. Then on Wednesday, I take games from Monday and I review them for those concepts and see how well we did, see if we had some of those concepts get exemplified. Then we move to Friday and we have fun. We just play against viewers. Again, though, my job is to look for those things and I play the same way I'm trying to get you to play stepwise. So I'm going along with you. So if you're 1800 or better, you could play whatever opening you want. Um, 
uh, uh, thinks Muhammad were saying, yeah, well, except for on a bit gambit. If you want to play a gambit, feel free. You're 1800 and above. Play the King's Gambit if you like. Play the Vienna Gambit. Play whatever you like. You could play, uh, you know, the English. You could play the Grab. Have fun. But I'm assuming that you know all of the principles and you're breaking the principles knowingly and enjoyingly and you're doing it for a purpose and you're not going to fall for easy mates, right? You're not going to do things like this or better yet, let's see. How does it go? I think it went like this or, uh, yeah, let's say, no, this wasn't it. Um, I'm trying to remember. It was fun. It was fun watching this happen, actually. It was sad. But it was something like this. Uh, I, think it, I think it did go like this. And I think the player did this and they got checkmated. All right? Terrible. Terrible. They just got checkmated. Um, and so they're, they're and, and I forget, Rosman tells this story much better than I do. But it was something like um, where they take, like they don't take or they get taken the next one and then they say, okay, take me again. Uh, but anyway, where it ends up is something like this. Yeah, I think it was this. And then let's say this and we get a check and we still get made it anyway. That's another version. Uh, but anyway, the point being that if you're 1800 and you're playing this, on the birds, you're not going to hopefully make those mistakes and lose that easily, right? You're not going to fall into those things. So at 1800, play whatever you want. But when you're first learning and you're trying to get to 1300, Brandon, great job. You're trying to get to 1400, Chris, great job. Um, you're trying to get better. I want you only moving your center pawns unless provoked. And then once we get solid, actually, actually, you know what? If you've been with me for the 10 lessons, we're doing the review. After this review, you should be able to start experimenting with other openings, right? Because that we covered the opening principles and we've drummed them into your heads and beat it into you. And if you were a horse, you'd be lying on the side dead because we beat that horse to death. So hopefully now you can feel comfortable doing that after tonight. Now, you guys can do whatever you want. So my point is during the simul, I'm going to try my best to only follow the same basic principles I've been teaching you because guess what? You could play great chess with those basic principles. You do not need to play gambits to be a good player, right? You could be a grandmaster and not play a gambit. You don't have to, gambits are risky. In fact, grandmasters rarely play gambits against grandmasters because they're giving up material and they know the game so well, it's not really a good idea. Uh, oh, yeah, possibly, Brandon, especially especially if we can use it to go over all of these options we're talking about. Now, usually I review games, Brandon, again, on, on Wednesdays, but if you can't make Wednesdays at 11, I um, review games a little bit on Mondays when I introduce concepts, but Fridays we usually don't review games, we usually just play. It's more of a get it out of our system. But if we have time, remind me, Brandon, and uh, definitely we can do that. Uh, especially if you throw it into a Lee Chess study. Was it on Lee Chess or was it on chess.com? If it's on Lee Chess, throw it into a study. Invite me to the study as a contributor. Great. Throw it into a study. Invite me as a contributor and then remind me near the end and we'll take a run out and look at it and go over it real quick. That'll be easy and fun and I don't mind. that. I, I will definitely do that for you even though, like I said, normally we just play games. All right, so we're probably, we got only three. Uh, so who's not playing Brandon? I don't see you in the simul. Uh, what's up, Brandon? Uh, aren't you going to play in the simul? You said it'll be our first time we'll ever play, and I don't see you in there. Flavio, thank you for uh, signing up for the, and uh, thank you for being here, Flavio. Uh, appreciate it. And Modern Ancient. So I'd like to get the simul started sooner rather than later, because then we'll just do some individual games, right? We'll just play games Whoever wants to challenge, we could play. And if nobody challenges Brandon, we can go over your game um, in there in the middle. And then I might just go out and look for challenges if necessary. So I, I like watching other people play. I don't know what the fascination is with it because I like it too. I, I'll watch, you know, IMs play and I'll sit there. Oh, this is really interesting. And, and I can kind of vegetate sometimes, go away, get something to eat, come back. I don't know why it's so much fun watching them. Uh, I try to watch uh, one minute and some of them I can almost keep up with. But most of them, one minute, they're just pre-moving. Even I watch uh, Magnus Carlsen, and he seems to pre-move half his moves, and I just lose interest because they don't. Feel, I don't feel like there's any artistry. They're not really playing. They're, 
and half the time they make tricky moves because they figure their opponent's pre-moving, so they make a bad move, but they know the opponent would have pre-moved, and based on that, I mean, they're thinking that fast ahead. It's amazing to me, but I can't keep up. I can't, and I watch, um, I watch Hikaru Nakamura do uh, puzzles. I can't keep up. I just, I can't keep up. They're too fast for me, so for me, I, I, I watch them. It's kind of like I don't know, watching a car race that I don't understand, but it's, oh, look, he's in the lead, okay. Uh, but I just, I, I don't get it. Now, other sports, I understand better. I can understand the nuances. I can see what they're doing. But sometimes certain games are just too fast for me to keep up with. And watching some of these grandmasters play bullet, totally, no, I get nothing out of it. Uh, even when they play three minute, I get almost nothing out of it. But give me three minute and slower, I can start seeing it, start getting something out of it, start understanding, start feeling like, um, I'm enjoying and, and maybe even learning. By the way, I watch um, Rosen play. Ah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, Chris. I love b-ball. Can't play it anymore with bad knees, but oh man, I used to play it every chance I got. Three, four days a week. But anyway, um, I like watching Rosen and I like watching Bartholomew. And both of them amaze me because I watch them play and, and it's like, are they getting more time? Is their clock running slower? Because they sit there and they talk about it. Well, I think I'll do this. I'm, I'm liking this. And, and with this position, I should have, yeah, I'm going to do that. And they do it. And you're like, man, they must be like almost out of time. And you look up and they're, they're doing fine on time. It's like, how do they, how do they, how can they talk about everything so calmly and so slowly and still have all that time? When I'm playing, it's like, I feel like I got to, I got to keep moving every moment. Even in a five minute game, I feel like I got to really move fast. So I don't know, guys. You gotta, you're gotta, going to have to help me out with that. All right. Um, I think we've been long enough. We're almost going on a half an hour. We have four people signed up. We'll get the sign. We'll start it. I gave myself extra time because I thought we might have eight or nine or ten people. Uh, so tell them I won't talk about it. Yeah. All right. Uh, let me just make sure nobody asked to get into the team. Anybody that tried to join the team late, just want to make sure that they get into the tournament if they wanted to and I don't want to be missing them. Nope. Okay. Nobody's there. So we should be able to start the simul. Let's see. Accept random candidate. No. Fun times. Yeah. All right. We'll start accepting people. Hopefully nobody gets bounced out. Make sure nobody got bounced out. All right. Good luck, everybody. Have fun. And hopefully you guys like watching. And uh, we could try full screen. Maybe that'll be a little. Let's see if that's better. So then you get to see what I see. Oh, and we wanted to we have an automatic, there we go, auto switch. So see all the games are down here at the bottom, all three other games, and then the first game up here. And I get white in every game. And I would love, personally, I would love, oh, we're going to do some, uh, I'll do some queen pawn too. And uh, we'll do another queen pawn. Now, so I got to tell you guys, again, I'm eating my own cooking because I never play queen pawn. I, 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 it's, I've never, I've played tournament chess for over 30 years. I've been playing tournament chess since 16. So that means I've been playing tournament chess for ages. And I've never played queen pawn in my life in a tournament game. Not once. So uh, this is kind of fun, right? It's different. I'm trying it out. I'm eating my own cooking. I tell my students, play some queen pawn and see how it feels. You got to play both, right? You, you chess till you get used to it. And then if you decide, yeah, I really like this queen pawn thing, then go for it. Then that's fine. But um, until you play, until you try the queen pawn, then you can't know if you would like it, right? So I want you to try different things. I want you to try queen pawn openings, and so I'm gonna do it too. Even though, like I said, it's it's it is so far from normal for me. But we're gonna try it. We're gonna try it. Uh, let's see. We're gonna develop and just keep playing, guys. I'm looking for alignment issues. Okay, so I'm gonna, um, first time I'm gonna break the rule on this one um, because I'm going to play this only because I wanna already start going out to the queen side. I feel like my pieces are mostly developed, so I think I have the opportunity, I'm gonna take it. Oh, nice, I like it, uh, but it's a pawn move. So again, by our principles, I'm not crazy about it. Uh, we should be developing our pieces, not pushing pawns, uh, but uh, we're going to see how it goes. We're going to just see how that one goes. Okay, a pin deserves a pin, I guess. A pin is a pin is a pin. And so we're going to uh, continue. All right. Um, yep, yep, yep. And now I don't like that. So that's very good. I like that move a lot. I like that move a lot. Uh, 
we could develop the knight, we could develop the pawns, we could develop a lot of things. Um, could push that one, but then he gets there, and I don't, I'm not crazy about that at all, but then we do get that technique, so we'll just do it with that technique and say, see how it goes. All right, we expect it. Do I want to take or do I want to back up? I do have a little bit of time, so we could back up. Nah, you know, do we want to give up the center? Nah. I don't like this pawn here blocks him from the best square. So why am I eager to trade? Let's not if we go here though He takes I take he takes I take if I take back with the king. It's okay I lose the right to castle, but the Queens would be off the board at the time. So I'm not that worried about it eh, Do I want to how do I want to play it? Oh questions 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 today. What do I want to do again? Oh, this isn't queen pawn. This is one. I actually know uh uh, we're going to play docile, I guess. I guess we're going to play docile. We're not going to play overly aggressive. Uh, in arena tournaments where you're trying to win as fast as you can, I would play much more aggressive. All right. And moving on. Let's see. We're going to develop, but uh, the question is where. We're going to go there. We're going to have a little fun there. And we could go there. Yeah, why not? All right. Uh, the Ocheka Rooney. How do we want to stop the check? I'm thinking we're going to do it with a pawn. And uh, yes, we get that attack going. And we haven't castled yet, so that's always interesting. <laughs> if we say check first, takes, and then we have no place to go. So we'll just double the pawns that way. All right, very good. Like it, like it. I like it, I like it. I want some more of it. Mm -hmm -hmm. All right, moving along. Developing, developing, and developing. And uh, we'll just keep going here for a while. And yep, I knew that was coming, kind of, sort of. Not surprised whatsoever. Hmm, interesting situation. So this one we didn't play with the pawn out. We played more by the basic rule. So we'll just keep moving with the basic rule and develop, develop, develop. I'm not thinking much. I am moving pieces. Moving pieces rather quickly while developing. Hmm, this is an interesting wicket we have ourselves in. Let's go. Again, not thinking. Maybe I should be. <laughs> ah, that's always fun, right? We should probably be thinking. And I'm just moving. And I'm moving based on principles. So I'll give myself that much at least. Uh, moving on principles, not always the best options all the time, but moving on principles. Oh, let's see. That's a bad move. That one I can tell, Chris. Um, you gave me too much candy there. Uh, just looking for that uh, grouping for the night. That was a grouping question for the night. Um, here we get to um, do alignment. We like alignments. We're looking, this is a nice alignment for him. This is a nice alignment for us. We're looking for alignments. Okay, and now last time I took with the queen in this situation and didn't end up with, with uh, bad pawns, but I think I want to end up with a bad pawn on this one for fun. Okay, so we definitely get that one. Got to take that when we offered it. Rook comes over, not, not bad at all, not bad at all. We have that, but that really doesn't get us where we want to be, I don't think. I don't think it does. Um... I think we're gonna go there. We're, um, I think I forgot I needed the castle in that game. I gotta keep track of that, make sure that I don't forget to do that later. Okay, we're gonna go for the open file right away. Wanna be able to fight for the open file, and yes, now we have to decide, do I have three little pawns by themselves or do I keep it down to two pawn islands? Uh, by general rule, I'm gonna keep it down to two pawn islands. Hmm, that's interesting, that's a pawn. But then we lose our queen, or we lose the bishop, and then he gets to take the pawn. That would be a discovered attack. Nicely done. So we're just going to castle. And, uh, yep, thought the might knight come in. Look at that. He's trying to do it back to me. Good job. Good job, Chris. Good job. Look for those opportunities, my friend. Um, we're going to have to not allow that to happen. That would be... That would be very bad on my part. I shouldn't do that. Um, let's see. I don't remember how this game got to this. Oh, this was the one where we just took that way. We do need to um, get these pawns moving soon, I feel like. And uh, I'm not crazy about that one. Um, let's 
Let's get the queen out onto the board a little bit and see what happens out there. All right. Um, yes, yes, yes. And then if he takes, then we take, and uh, not good things are going to happen. Uh, we still have this pawn hanging, but he's threatening the rook. If I take back afterwards, he still gets this. So that's going to happen if I'm not careful almost no matter what. So we're going to give up a pawn. We don't mind. Lose a pawn. We're way ahead. I think we're way I feel like we're way ahead. All right. So now that pawn is uh, protected, but I feel good about uh, my pieces. And so we're just going to keep developing. All right, we get a castle. Uh, not a bad idea, of course. Castling is a good idea. You should castle when you can. I'm um, looking at alignment. Looking at alignment. I'm looking at... Do I want this rook or that rook? Hmm, we want that rook. Looking at alignment. All right, so gives up a pawn. I, we give up a pawn. He gets... Yeah, we give up a pawn. Okay. And uh, what do we have here? What do we have here? Take the knight. Do we take back with the bishop of the pawn? If we take back with the pawn, he's got places to go, things to do. So let's see. Yes, yes, yes. Um, that protects almost everything, but this is a little cleaner. We like this better. Still attacking everything. Yep, that's a safe square. All right, knight comes in, finds our weak pawn. I like it for him. I like it for him. I like it. But we can now get our other rook into play. And there's that pawn too, though. So, you know, I mean, not pawn, but square. I don't like that square. Don't like that square. No, I don't, said Sam. I am. So I will admit and back up. I will admit that I could have done better, be in a better position. And I'm just going to back up because sometimes you just have to do that. And uh, I think we're going to go ahead and win a free pawn. And we get a check. Uh, so we're going to run away. Yes, definitely run away. And uh, what do we got here? No, oh, castle. Okay, I got to catch up to see the moves. The moves go by so fast sometimes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, how, how, how to play, how to play. All right, knight moves. I uh, was going to chase the knight away. Don't have to chase the knight away because it went away on its own. It has this square. It's protecting that pawn. And we can chase that knight again. Play chase the knight. We can tell the, that knight to go away. And we get a queen attack. Beautiful. Who is this? Brandon. Nice, Brandon. Great job. Double attack. I didn't castle soon enough. Lazy me. I needed to castle. It wasn't a free pawn. Quite proud of you, Brandon. Good job. Good job. I can't castle out of check. Oh, that's so annoying. That is so annoying when that happens. Let's see. Do we want to go here or there? Uh, we're going to get a discovered attack on us if we're not careful. Uh, we're going to go here. Good job, Brandon. Good job. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, let's see. So I'm looking at alignments again, and I'm thinking I can align a couple of ways. So I'm going to start by aligning uh, that way. All right. Got to do better. Got to do better. Let's see. Hmm. Knight backs up as is logical. We want to push the pawn, and it uh, looks like we can. So let's do it. Let's get that pawn pushed. Okay, now I'm going to have to work a lot harder, Brandon. That, that was a good job. Good job, my friend. Good job. All right, so first thing is let's not, you know, continue to leave our king out in the open forever. All right. Um, which one? We'll go with this one. And um, let's see, hmm, rook attack pawn, but I think we have enough material to do what we want. All right, uh, not bad, nothing wrong with that for you, nothing wrong with that. Uh, take, we're okay, I think we're, you know what, I don't know, I'm not crazy about some of these ideas I'm having right now. Yeah, we're going to go with that. Open up the king some more. Go ahead. Pawn's there. Knight's here. And what do we have here? Ah, the pawn moves. But I don't know if it's a good idea because the everything is like pinned almost. I feel like everything is pinned. I think that's a bad situation. But that's okay. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to come back from bad situations of my own. Um, made some mistakes. I've made a few. 
All right. Oh, hey, guys. Brandon, yes. Yes, I wasn't even looking to see what all that was about. Uh, let's start off with a check. I think that game is going to be a winner. A winner. Winner, winner, chicken dinner, maybe. Maybe. Okay, don't want to stay in this pin. That could be a problem. So let's get out of the pin. Um, now, alignment-wise, I still see another rook aligned with my queen. But, you know, sometimes we're going to go for that. All right, look at this alignment. Beautiful job, beautiful job, Flavio, getting the alignment that we're talking about. We wanted the alignment, we see it. I got one, two, three. I have one, two, three. So I believe I'm okay with this move because uh, I counted. And that would be a piece there. And uh, okay, queen goes back. Uh huh. The knight is holding what it needs to hold. So everything is looking pretty good for my opponent. He's just like found a way to keep everything intact and looking good. Ha! Ah, hate it when they do that. Uh, so what do I can? What can I do to hurt my opponent? And uh, I can see pawn pushes, but you know what? I think no matter what pawn pushes happen, I like the idea of this being here. So we're just going to go there. All right. Um, let's see how to do this. There should be ways to get through. There should be. There should be. So we'll start with that one. And, uh, ooh, okay. Knight comes out, attacks my pawn, but it's protected twice. So I think I'm okay there. Now I don't want to push and just have him win another pawn. Uh, definitely can't take because my queen's sitting over here. That's not, that would not be good. Not be good. But uh, we can go, no, we can't go here. So if we go here, the knight goes here, and we get another double attack. Those knights are so tricksy. I'm telling you, knights, knights are vicious. Knights are vicious. So let's tell the knight to go away. When in doubt, tell the knight to go away. Okay, and I'm losing this game, if I remember correctly, by a few points. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, yep. This one I'm losing by a few points. Uh, so let's see if we can't start turning our fortunes around a bit. Uh, let's not we bit. Not going to be not going to be easy. All right, Chris. Uh, but yeah, not not doing well. We're falling down on some of these tournament games. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Flavio. Uh, so you make a game into a study by uh, going to the game, move it to, uh, if you click on the hamburger, it'll let you move it to a, a lot of places. Uh, one of them is to a study. Usually right off the bat, you could just move it to a study. So you, you'll have to check that out. Um, yeah. Uh, but you should be able to move it to a study directly from there. All right. Good game, Chris. Um, and if not, then there's other opportunities to move it to a study. But uh, right now, I'm going to focus a little bit more on my problem area over here. Um, man, this, these guys are just, they're just playing so well today. Uh, playing very well, very well. I think we win a rook this way. Yeah, I didn't have any choice about that one. Bishop took, nicely done. See what I'm down here on material with Brandon. Oh. Oh. <laughs> well, Chris, you did real well in the Battle Royale. That was a good tournament. You get, did really well. Really well. I love it, though. We had a, uh, uh, against me, we had already some really nice jobs of the, of the different attacks that we've been looking for. So I've been very, very proud and happy to see that, even if it's against me. That's what I like to see. Ah, we're down to three games here. Yep. Oh, Modern Ancient, you're in this game still. Where are you at, buddy? I forgot I was playing you because I don't even look. I don't look at the names enough. I think. All right. Uh, not bad. Not bad. Oh, boy, just coming through. Just coming through. He says. How can I hurt you? It's not easy, being green, or hurting you. Or doing anything else. Oh my goodness. Don't really want to go there, don't want to go there, don't want to go there. I don't have much here at all. This this game is looking quite the ugliness. I do have pawns over here. Maybe I need to refocus, but um, all those pieces are in the back rank hiding from me. They're not letting me attack them. They're not letting me get to them at all. These pieces are just solid. I don't like how solid they are. All right. 
Two solid. All right, move the pawn. Good idea. Just stop that uh, momentum. And how can I rearrange? How can I get to the squares I want to get to? All right, that's uh, our new mission is to find ways to play better. So that pawn is under attack. We get a knight. Uh, the pawn is protected. The bishop is protected. Oh, the knight's uh, looking good. Everything's looking kind of good. Let's start off with a, with a take the rook. Take the rook, folks. All right, um, we might have a chance to at least get some activity. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. All right, um, yeah, that's that's powerful. I like that. Hmm. All right, uh, I feel like we should just bring the night back, and we've it's done its job. It's had its fun. It's time to come back home. All right, so the knight will just come back home. All right, that comes up. No surprise. But how do I get in there? Ah, I am, I'm so hurting here. Life is so bad here. All right, let's see. Ah, yes, uh, back to here. And uh, what do we have? We, we have Flavio keeping me out of where I want to be. That's very rude. No, it's not. It's it's fine. That's what you're supposed to do. I need to rearrange again. I thought I rearranged just fine, but now I'm not so sure. All right. You forgot about the knight, modern ancient. You forgot about the knight. Uh, which knight did you forget about? Let's see. Brandon's doing great. Uh, let's see. First time ever playing him, and he's just rocking and rolling. He's rocking and rolling. Uh, let's see, Flavio. Flavio, now you come in. Nice, Flavio. I don't know where he's going, though, so that's okay. I, I kind of like it. I like it. I like it. I want some more of it. And uh, I don't know where he's going at the moment, which is good for me. I see where he might want to go. Might be thinking about that. I think it's okay. We'll wait. And the pawn moves. The pawn. Oh! Yes, Modern Ancient, you left the knight. But maybe you're baiting me into taking this pawn. But it's free candy. And we know about free candy. We take free candy when we can. So, um, yeah, I'll give away the pawn for the knight. Yeah, you shouldn't have said you forgot the knight. I might not have noticed. I mean, stranger, much stranger things have happened, my friend. Um, you could have just left it alone. And I might not have even realized it. All right. Uh, let's see. Oh, you know, that has... I was thinking I could just let you take. I don't mind if you push. But Flavio, I don't like the idea of you taking because if I take back, you have the knight, you have the queen, you have too many pieces attacking my poor queen. So I think we might do better with that move. All right. Um, kind of expect it again. You get a discovered attack. Mm, you get a check, and then you can't get a second one, though. But you get to take with the queen. I don't know if that's good for me, bad for me. It's probably bad for me. All right, we're going to go for it. All right, so you did take the pawn. Don't blame you. Uh, nothing else being attacked. Generally exciting at the moment. Hmm. We got a pawn loose here. Do I care about the loose pawn? Do I have enough things that I'm attacking that I don't care about the loose pawn? No, actually, um, I don't see any reason to give up the loose pawn. So we'll protect the loose pawn. Oh, oh, I dropped the pawn. I didn't see that choice. Drat it, drat it, double drat it. I did not see that choice. I saw other choices. I didn't see that choice. Now the question is, do I want to block? I'm not gonna, I, I, I hate putting myself into a pin. I usually never do this. I, I, I abhor it. I think it's like, terrible gameplay but we're gonna do it this time I know I just you shouldn't do it right shouldn't do it and I'm, I'm doing it anyway all right we're gonna just uh, you know what we're gonna say you win we'll back up yeah you win we, which is gonna back up all right so we're gonna have to play it again we're gonna have to say play it again Sam play it again go away um, Bishop is that knight is not bothersome too much but he is active very active 
All right, I still don't want to take. I don't want to take. I don't want to take. Knight, that one's protected. Everything is protected. I have time. And I can now reposition here, I guess. Or do I just want to save the bishop? I like my bishop. I do like my bishop. Eh, that doesn't really work. Okay, we're going to have to lose the bishop if he wants it. Depends on how badly he wants it. All right, what do we have here? What do we have here? We have squares that are under attack only once. Uh, no other real headaches to fathom. Other headaches to fathom. Well, that was a fork, so I don't think we can let that fork happen. He's got all these knights. They're so annoying. These knights, Flavio, all your knights. I have, you have too many pieces. Too many pieces. Yeah, I didn't get to think too much. So this didn't work out the way I was hoping in the uh, simul. I guess, you know, Murph is right after all. Um, the single games are better. <laughs> I get to look better and find moves that make sense for us learning versus just trying to survive and move fast. And I'm still, I'm still in the mode that I have to move fast because I'm used to playing against when I don't have a time, uh, extra time, which I do this game. So thank you for whoever gave me that. I did it, right? That was me. All right. I gave myself the extra time, so that was a good thing. Keeps us from having to rush too much. Um, hmm. I like it. I like it. It works. It works. Very good, Brandon. Nice find, Brandon. It's forced. I have no choice. Excellent, Brandon. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Good job. Uh, where's he going afterwards? Uh, I don't know. But excellent job. Uh, but where'd you go? Brandon, the move was here, man. The move was here, Brandon. You get, you get the fork. You get both the king and the queen. You get the queen, Brandon. Hey, king. Brandon, you had me. You had me dead to rights. Game over. Game over. I was ready to resign. Well, I don't resign. But you had me. The game was over. The fork just had to go to the other... Oh, Brandon. Brandon, you had me, my man. Come on. Don't want you missing those. Okay, now we'll finally take this pawn, I guess. We've been threatening to take it forever. And we didn't want to because we didn't want to free up that bishop. But now I think we can, I think we can, I think we can. Got to be careful. And my queen is out there in the middle, way out here in front. You know, I get worried about getting that queen trapped somehow. So, got to gotta be careful. Modern ancient might trap my queen. Yeah, you did. You did, Chris. Your grandma did that queen. Brandon, the queen sack was excellent. It wasn't even really a sack because you take and then you get to fork and take right back. And you would have gotten a queen, and a, um, you would have gotten the queen. You would have gotten, let's see, you would have traded queens, and you took a rook. So you would have gotten, it would have been a straight out trade. Perfect trade. Uh, you would have gotten a rook and a queen for a, actually for a knight and a queen. A rook and a queen for a knight and a queen. <laughs> it was a misclick drag. What were you dragging it over near that square for anyway? No, I, I hear you. It happens. I hear you. Sorry it happened, because you had me. You, yeah, that was a beautiful sequence, beautifully planned out, thought out. I loved it. I thought you you did everything. It was just beautiful. I didn't even see it. You took As soon as you took the rook, I'm like, oh my gosh, look at that knight. Oh, he's got me. Because I'm thinking your queen has to move, and I'm going to take the pawn with check. So I thought you had me all the way. So Yeah, king, we're doing a simul. Almost done. Almost done. Only have... Uh, Two ga three games left? Yeah, I think this means three games. We had four. We had you should have been here. We could have used you. Okay, I gotta. Uh, I gotta. Sorry, I gotta concentrate a little bit because I don't even know what's going on anymore. Uh, he's attacking here. Um, he is attacking there. Do we have? Can we ignore that attack and do other things instead? I don't feel like we can ignore that attack. It's a shame. But I don't see how I can ignore that attack. So we're just waiting because he's got all these, all these good possibilities um, to do me damage. Modern, ancient, uh, no, that was Brandon just had me dead to rights. I, 
Ah, it was depressing how well he had me. Had me locked up, knocked down. I was out for the count. All right, what are we doing here? All right, what are we doing here? Okay. Well, we could take that later, so let's start with checks, right? Always look for checks, guys. So checks are, are great because they're forcing moves, and you can't uh, you can't get into trouble if you check somebody, right? Uh, so let's see. I think we had somebody trying to join the team. Hey, Toby! How's it going, buddy? Thanks for joining the Ford live stream. Hey, Chess Wizard. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I see an old note from Chess Wizard, and I was thinking it was here for this one. All right, so the idea here is to try to get some place where we can double attack and win the rook, right? That's, that's the concept there. So if I push here, he's got to go here, and I don't even have a second check there at all. But if we take here first, if we take there first, we might be able to find our way into a double check. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So maybe check for, oh, no, that wouldn't work. Um, but check first, he moves, then we could take, and we just win the pawn. Uh, so let's do that. Let's just win the pawn. Couldn't do the other. Oh, backed all the way up. I am actually surprised. I didn't know if that's what we should be doing here at this situation. And uh, I think we have enough pieces protecting everything else. Yeah, we're going to do that. All right, we're going to take that. I don't know if I had if I could have won the rook right then. I didn't even pay attention to tell you the truth. That just I moved pretty quickly at that point. Move, move, move. Keep the pieces moving. All right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I could check the team up, but I, I I told you I'm not thinking as much as I should, Chris. I'm going to try to do better. If we do a simul again next Friday, I'm going to take my time and try to make very good moves for you guys um, versus just playing fast. Uh, I, I'll admit, I'm just playing fast. Uh, no, okay, I didn't. I couldn't win the rook, so I feel better about that at least. But now I can win another pawn, I believe. I believe. I believe. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm actually uh, mimicking? No. Um, uh, mimicking? I guess it's mimicking. Um, Simon Sinek. I really like him as a speaker. Uh, good stuff. Start with why. I use it a lot. I, I, I also do speaking about um, organizational development stuff, process improvement, um, things of that nature. And uh, Simon Sinek, uh, I agree with a lot of what he says as far as things like process improvement, organizational development. And so uh, start with the why is critical for me. I believe in it. You got to start with the why, work your way from there to your problem solving. Uh, I'm thinking about this file. It's uh, alignment wise, it just gets me with a, protecting a pawn. Well, I could go all the way across. And I just don't want his uh, queen getting too active, but I think we're okay. All righty then, uh, I feel like we almost can win that rook, but it's not as easy as it looks, so we are going to start pushing a pawn. See if we get that pawn where it needs to go. Oh, free candy. Free candy. The free candy alert is on. And May, you missed that one. Um, there is a 10 second increment. Yes, there is. Thank you for asking. Uh, the knight is pinned. We don't like pinned. We don't like our pieces being pinned. It is pinned. What do we do here? This is like so complicated. I haven't even thought about how to carry out this game. Okay. Well, we could move our king. We can't get really out of the pin comfortably. Yeah, that's not going to happen. That might. I don't like pins. So pins make me want to get out of them so I can free my pieces. Just natural, natural desire. A natural desire, my friends. All right, now I think I'm getting to the point where I should be able to win that rook. It's not protected. It's an unprotected piece. So that makes me think it should be possible to win it. Okay, didn't think about him going there, so that makes it harder to win it. I could go there and then there. And that looks pretty good. Has to go there. 
and from so I'm I'm thinking here check king takes queen here no queen here sorry queen here king only has this square but then uh, queen can go here king has this square and I still don't win the rook okay so don't win the rook don't win the rook and you still don't win the rook and he's threatening to come here with with an attack so we're going to start here get our queen back to protect on that other board that other board all right king moving up not bad at all the knight is free but i don't know where i want to put it anyway i'm kind of liking here i'm really liking there just don't think i can get him there anytime soon although that's where i would want to get him and uh we're gonna go there all right so king's there we'll go check here to protect the back line so i don't have to worry about that happening uh, no problems there. That looks good for um, for my opponent. He looks fine. Oh, could have just taken there. Still need to take there soon. Just clean it up. Just get that out of there. Uh huh. Where's he going? Maybe sideways. Knight to tricky. Need to take advantage of their trickiness. Get them moving somewhere into the game. Oh man, I, I so want to open that up. It's so dangerous to open it up though. We're going to do it anyway. We're going to have fun. Uh, we, we should lose that game. We're way behind in, in material on that game. We should lose it, but let's, let's have some fun. See what we can do with it. Uh, don't want to linger le uh, too long. Okay. Well... Not crazy about it, but we're going to do it anyway. We're going to try to get active. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay. We're going to finish this one off, I think. I think, Brandon, I think I got you. I think I got you. Who's my other ones here? Who's the one that stole that piece from me that time? Who got that piece off me? We'll start there. Uh huh. Okay, we're gonna play for the end game. Just finish that game up. All right, almost done, and we can uh, do some other fun stuff. In fact, Brandon has a game we're going to go over. He had a game he wanted us to see, so we're going to take a look at it. i um, thinking this is actually cleaner, better, faster, better, better, faster. Uh, let's see, what's the fastest way to this result? I think it's this way. Try to finish faster than slower. Okay, we're going to limit the king. Just going to box the king in. Then we're going to move the king over and keep boxing in. I actually watched, uh, I think it was Botez um, playing a game, and she like, she had to make sure she didn't stalemate. I'm like, really? You know, there's so many simple ways to make sure you don't stalemate uh, that she didn't actually look for. Her. So I'm trying to find checkmate here. Uh, rook here doesn't work. Rook king comes up. Rook here doesn't work. King comes there. I don't want the king getting away. Uh, so we want to push the king back to the back rank. So I think that's the fastest way to do that. Okay, we cannot 
this on that. I did that once against one of my students. I just let her bring the queen, just, just keep moving her pieces. And I was like, oops, made a mistake on that with her. Okay. So the king covers those three, the queen covers those two, but he's got lots of squares left. We want him to have lots of squares left. Uh, check there, he gets to move up. Eh, eh, eh. All right, so this is the simplest way. Just block off, keep the king on the back row. No chances of stalemate. No chances whatsoever of stalemate. And so, much easier. All right, guys, uh, simul's complete. It's kind of nice when games end at the same time or close to the same time. Awesome sauce. Uh, thank you guys for playing. I, I, I enjoyed it. Uh, let's, uh, Brandon, you want to check out the good game? Thank you, uh, MA. Good games, guys. Good games. I, I should have lost at least one of those, and I think maybe two or three. But I need to, I need to do what I'm trying to. I'm trying to make sure I show you guys stuff, and I, I you're right. I'm just playing too fast. Um, <laughs> nothing like Hikaru. Nothing like Hikaru. Um, but you guys might be proud. I've, I've decided that I do. I'm thinking I am going to work maybe towards a goal, and that would be National Master. Because if I'm correct, and I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but I think National Master only requires that you get to a 2200 USCF rating. And you don't have to have a um, FIDE rating, FIDE rating, because it's a National Master. And I think it's just a rating, over the board, of course. But uh, I, I, I'm thinking about I'll, I'll be going, if, if I want to keep playing chess seriously, uh, I haven't played serious chess in a long time because I didn't really feel like I had a goal that I could reach. So I just, I run tournaments, I teach classes, I play occasionally. But now I might actually study and look to get better myself and try to get good enough to make National Master would be a fun thing to do. Something to do before I die, bucket list type thing, you know? So anyway, uh, Brandon, did you uh, make that, that uh, study so we could go look at it? Oh, well, thanks, Flavio. I, I, I would need support. I would need, definitely, I would need some support. So that would be great. Um, so where to go about the over-the-board rating? What do you mean? Over-the-board rating, OTB, you have to play in over-the-board tournaments, live tournaments. And you can find tournaments, Chris, guaranteed in your area. Uh, if we look in Chess Life, we can do that together, and they'll show you all the uh, tournaments in your state in your city and there's going to be tournaments in your area somewhere in every place uh, especially ever since uh, the queen's gambit so all right so you did already invite me to this uh, study so i will go to that study and i'll show you guys how you do that well let me share the full screen because i like showing you guys about lee chess also so i go to study and i'm not going to go to my studies i'm going to go to studies i contribute to and then I'm going to go to recently updated. So uh, there it is right there at the top, game study, and it says Brandon. And so I can get to that game study. Now I'm gonna show you guys, I'm gonna leave it on full board for a little bit because I wanna show you how I analyze for my students. And I'm offering to anyone who is a follower. You know, if I was trying to get money, I'd say only if you're a subscriber, I don't care. But if you're a follower, which means that you care enough to know when I'm online and, and you're part of the family, I will happily analyze a game for you and I'll show you how I analyze. And so the first thing, Brandon, you didn't do and you didn't know, so it's okay, but I usually ask for you to analyze the game yourself first. Now, uh, you could turn on the engine and let the engine analyze the game for you, show you strengths, show you weaknesses, show you your best moves, your inaccuracies, your um, mistakes and your blunders. But I will tell you, I don't want you to turn that on. If you do turn it on, pay attention to the mistakes and blunders and go ahead and use the little, it'll have a little button that says learn from your mistakes. Check it out, try it out. It'll bring up each one like a puzzle. It'll show you the move you made and then have you try to find a good move. And if you, if you make a move, not the best move, it'll calculate, hey, it'll say yes, good move. Or it'll tell you no, try again. So the reason I don't want you to do that is, is twofold. First of all, the inaccuracies are really hard to get a, a grasp of. They're vague. They're, they're, I, I, you're not, the inaccuracies are like, oh, you should have moved that pawn, this pawn because, you know, it protects this square for like five moves. It's just, it, 
It's not good for us, especially not for, I don't get it. And, and I'm 2000. Uh, we don't want this for, for the beginner level. But mistakes and blunders are pretty clear usually, but then they just show you the move you should have made and you have to let the computer play out like five or six moves just to see what they're talking about. And sometimes when you get through the, all of it, it says, oh, and it's a draw. And you're like, what? I won the game, you know? My move won the game. You're playing against humans and humans make mistakes, humans have pressure. You can make moves and we've talked about this, right? We've talked about alignments and we've talked about pins and how pins and alignments get you very stressed out. They stress out your opponent. Uh, Murph, great for telling me about things like, well, I want to get rid of that. And I go, why? He goes, because it, it, it was bothering me. I go, why? Well, it hits all these squares. And I go, but you don't have any pieces on those squares. He goes, yeah, but it bothers me. So humans are bothered. Computers aren't. So that's one of the reasons. The other reason is you need to learn how to find the mistakes and the pluses yourself. So what I would normally ask you to do, Brandon, which again, I didn't expect you to do, is to study, uh, I mean, to go over the game yourself and find your moves. And you should comment, and down here there's a bubble like a cartoon bubble. You should use that to comment on moves. And then you use that to comment on moves, and then when I come and analyze the game for you, I'll see your analysis, and you can leave questions there for me. I'll see your analysis, your questions, and we'll go from there, and I can give you comments on top of yours. I usually leave you questions. So we're gonna do that with Brandon's game, uh, but only because, right, he didn't do the comments, so I'll do comments. So I'll say things like here, um, a non-aggressive start, right? Leaving you the center. And what I mean by that is that Brandon should take over the center, right? We're playing by general principles. Brandon should take over the center. So knight moves, no problem. He develops a piece, but he should have, he could have been aggressive and said, I'm taking the center. You left it, I'm taking it. Okay, so I'd rather, I'd rather see him take over the center. Okay, so I can hit the bubble again and say, um, prefer you, you, uh, you take the center. Ah, oh, with a pawn. I usually type better than this, believe it or not. Taught myself how to type. My mom told me it was a good idea for, for a life and for getting jobs. All right. So again, same. I could say the same thing again, right? Still non-aggressive, still giving up the center. And, and Brandon, you're in the center. Again, because same story, right? And that's okay because, you know, maybe you're like, I'm waiting. I'm going to break the center, but I want to see what my opponent does. He's playing this quiet, just, you know, not moving it. And, but... I mean, how many pawn moves did he make? So this is where when I teach, I'm like, your opponent's made three pawn moves and hasn't developed a piece yet, but we expect one soon. And now you have two pieces developed, but you're not, you're not controlling the center yet. Um, and I want to see this knight get out. I want to see this pawn get out. I want to see this pawn get out. I want to see you dominate the center. So piece developed, and guess what? We're not controlling the center. There's no reason that you don't go all the way here, right? I mean, it's protected by the queen. So, I, I, again, I'd rather just see you take the center. I want to see you control the center. All right. So, again, I, I'm not writing it, but you get it. So, now, how many pawn moves has your opponent made? And not one of them has gone two squares. So, he's not space-wise. We call this space. If you push this, you have space for your pieces. If you push this, you have space for your pieces. If this was up here, you'd have more space for your pieces. Now, he's playing a kind of a counterpunch. In fact, it looks like what they call a hippo, um, but in reverse, because usually black plays the hippo. So it's like a, I'm just going to, and I call it a turtle shell. I'm just going to stay down here in this turtle shell and not take any risks. And I'll wait for my opponent to overstep. And Brandon, so now you're fianchettoing both bishops, which is what he's doing. I, I'm not a fan. Uh, I'm a fan of attacking, of, of occupying. Yes! I'm happy, Brandon, finally. I'm happy. I'm happy to see it. You got to take over the center, buddy. Got to take over the center. All right. And so we continue with development. No problems. Queen comes up, which makes me think he wants to castle queen side. Now, his queen side is as bad as his king side. This is the piece you want to get rid of. Um, you are ready if he castles queen side, if you want to attack queen side. But if you look at your pawns, they say that you normally should be attacking king side. 
But depending on where your castle is, you might decide differently. I like your knights. I don't like his. His knight did not take the best square possible. And this knight hasn't moved yet. So you're way ahead. So right now he castles. He already declares what side of the board his king is on. Although your pawns are pointing to one side, I wouldn't mind if you decided, I'm going to start launching this one and break this open as fast as you can, Brandon. I don't know what you did. Uh, I'll tell you guys also. The other thing I do, when I analyze your games on stream or privately uh, on my own, I don't look ahead. Right? I, I just think about what I want you to do, and this is by principle. So everything I've been saying is by principle. And one of the things I need to do to get better is to get past principles for myself. But I've been teaching principles for 10 weeks now, so it's kind of like stuck in my head too. But I want you to get so used to the principles that the moves are automatic. So for me, it's automatic, this principle. Automatic, I'm going to castle. So that's automatic for me, but at the same time, I should then say, okay, that's the automatic move. Now let's see if it's thematically correct, if it makes sense, if it works with the situation on the board. And I think in general it does. But again, I would have been so much happier if this pawn were here, uh, just because you would have both of these pawns here. The queen could step up. The queen could start looking at these diagonals with, with the pawn included. But anyway, moving on. So the queen moves up, which makes me think you're thinking castle and queenside because he did. A more dynamic, fun game would be to attack the opposite where the king is. And if you look, you guys are almost identical, but you have everything is developed except for a castle position. And your knights are better placed than his, but otherwise, you guys are looking a lot alike. You have more space, but only a little. All right, he moves his king over already, and you do castle queenside. Um, so. Now, your pawns do say attack kingside, so if you attack kingside after this point, I'd be like, okay, at least he's doing based on the pawns. So this is what I call one of those moves that don't hit anything of value right now. There's nothing he's attacking that you should be worried about. Uh, he didn't develop the other knight. He's moved this knight twice in the opening, and it's actually not doing anything for him. In fact, uh, you can just attack the knight. I don't know that he gets anything good if he... Just if you attack the knight, it has to leave. And you get to control the center. So you move your king over. Uh, looks very familiar, the two things. You guys seem to be doing the same kind of things. All right, queen moves over. I'm still waiting for the pawn push. Okay, so again, there's nothing stopping this pawn push. So you're in a study, so we can also give you other lines, by the way. So even back here, I liked pawn push. He can't take here. He has two pieces. You have two pieces. He can't take here. You've got two pieces. He's only got one. I think you own it. I don't know what he's going to do. He's got to move the knight, right? He can't take time to do something else because you'll get a knight. So now his knight has to move here to think about coming this way. That, that would be a move. He could put his queen here and say, I mean, his bishop here and say, ha ha, you know, I'll attack your queen. But your queen just steps up. And now the knight has one less square to go to. But it could go here. But either way, um, the knight moves away, and I don't have to do anything else. I want to keep my pawn center solid. I could bring the rook over and align with the queen. Remember alignment. So I'm looking for that too. Anyway, so yeah, I, I'd prefer that you had um, pushed that pawn here too. Queen is here. Look, you're aligned with your rook. Push the pawn. Happy to get rid of these two and have your rook, rook hit that queen. So, um, yeah. So now it's like you're prepping for it, but now he just pinned the pawn. He pinned the pawn, so now this pawn can't take this way without losing your queen, so you have to be careful. But he pinned your pawn, so I'm not happy about that. Good, you get out of the pin. I'm always happy when you get out of a pin, right? I, I, I've said that in the, in the simul. I don't like pins. I don't want you pinned. Get out of the pin. Good job. And he just like goes for it. He's, he's opening it all up. Um, you have squares for your knight now. Look at this square. Look at this beautiful square, Brandon. Are you with me, by the way? I'm sorry. I've been talking and not looking down to see if you had any questions. Yeah, yeah. Uh, A4 for white could have been good, too, especially if they both castle on that side. Let me see if I missed anything else. Sorry, guys. I am still not good at looking at chats. I do not know how these guys that play super fast but also chat super fast. Um, I mean... The, the chat is scrolling on some of these guys' websites where they have thousands of viewers and they're able to, like, answer some of them. All right, finally, 
you don't know how long I've been, yes you do, because I've said it like five times, how long I've been waiting for that pawn push. I'm so happy. Uh, it's not as good now as it was because, you know, he has two pieces here. It's just not as good. It's good, but it's not as good. So here though, um, I would have loved this too, because this attacks this pawn, attacks this square for the fork, attacks this pawn, knights again doing all that, attacking backwards here, protecting. So he's got to cover this. And let's say he covers this way so that he keeps both pawns. And, and then you could say, go away, go away. Uh, because now if you take, I've got three, four, five, I've got all these pieces. And look what's opening up. Ooh, I'm loving it. I'm um, just loving it. I'm just loving it. Um, so yeah, I, would, I think I would have liked to see the knight move threatening the fork. Uh, okay, but I like the pawn. And uh, nothing wrong with the pawn, but again, I again I'm thinking, I'm thinking Lincoln, and I don't want to give up my center. I got a nice dual pawn center, and if I go here, it allows him to lock this up, and the game changes flavor dramatically, becomes a very locked up game. Uh, you also have to be worried that when you do this, he doesn't have to do anything. He can let you take. He can let you take. And while he's letting you take, he could be doing this move, which threatens this move with the bishop. Again, looking at alignment, queen and rook together. Alignment, that's an, you know, remember we're looking for these alignment issues, seeking alignment, and there is an opportunity. Okay, good, good, Brandon, and I'll keep going. I, I never know, right? Um, face to face, you could tell people's expressions, you see if they're focused, they're making notes. But anyway, so yeah, um, I, I worry about this and this, and he doesn't have to take whatsoever. He can let you take. If he pushes here, you get another tempo. But this bishop coming on this diagonal is going to be annoying. And you're going to want to maybe get this knight here and then that pawn there. But then he's going to pin your knight. Oh, it's just not good, right? Think about it. He goes here. Uh, you go here. He goes here to pin your knight. You don't have the time to fork because you're going to lose your queen. And you could do this to protect. But then he could take and then you double up your uh, pawns again, and he's uh, it's just, I'm not feeling, I'm not feeling it, I don't want it. So, okay, he blocks it up, he locks it up, he says, we're done. Now you can't go here because of the pin. Not that you, that might have been a problem before too, when I kept wanting you to do it, by the way. <laughs> that might have been a problem a long time ago, and I just missed it. And now look, I don't know if you noticed, you might have to, you have to ask yourself, why did my opponent make their last move? He did not make this move to push. You've got two pieces on that square. He made this move so he could put the bishop here and skewer. He sees the alignment. He's going for the line. You have to recognize that this move protects, allows the rook to protect the bishop. Otherwise, you would just take it off, right? Otherwise, you would just take it off. So that's why he made that move. So what move should you make in response? Well, one move could be knight here. Knight goes here. If the bishop comes here, pawn comes out. If pawn comes here, you just take. So now the knight is hitting the pawn, not hitting the pawn, it's protected, but you are threatening to trade it off. So now I'm thinking knight here. Let's see what you did. Pawn there doesn't stop the bishop, but now you can anchor the knight. But again, he just gets to take, and then he starts trying to push that pawn and break free. He's going to, and there we go. Just what we talked about. So now he could have now, I, I'm, you know, he did this move. I, I get it. I don't get it. I don't know. Um, I get, oh, I know what the problem is. You could take with your queen. You do not have to double up and ruin your pawns. Good job, Brandon. All right. Sometimes I don't see things right away. So good job. Yes, your knight can take back. Okay, so he decides to move the knight, get out of the, uh, he doesn't want to trade his bishop for the knight. And uh, you're kind, you know, this is, not good. He's got a bishop going that way. He's got nice. His, his bishops went from being uh, Vianchetto doing nothing to at least looking pretty daunting. Uh, but, you know, his knight has very few squares. And from here, he has no squares. So this knight has no 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 future, right? He has, if you were looking at his career choices, it's bad. This knight really has only one choice. And from here, he has the same choice as this knight did. So neither knight has any hope, no hope, no hope whatsoever. But you got to find a way to break open, right? You need to break free. So we got to look for the right pawn break, which I'm thinking this is the one you got to look for because it would 
let this open up and then the pawns where you have your double rooks uh, you have the bishop ranking this way i'm thinking this is the pawn push you need to look for and pawn breaks are important at the next level for sure uh, so I do not like this move in general. It's good because it blocks up the position. It's bad because your queen can't take back, which means you're going to end up with double pawns. If you look at the white bishop, white, his white bishop has no life. Now he could go here and try to trade it off. That would be one option for his bishop. And the other bishop option is just to take it and double up your pawns. And maybe in the end game, maybe in the end game, he'll be able to take advantage. Doesn't do it. Doesn't do it. All right. So he's trying to um, free up his pieces, right? We already said, look, these pieces are, now the bishop had some scope, but again, this is the one that bothered John. The same bishop bothered John in his game that I went over. And the problem is it's not hitting anything right now. Um, White's, this bishop isn't doing anything. It's the good bishop. Look at all these pawns on white. This is the bad bishop. All these pawns are on white, but it's the good bishop, but he has no, no place to go. So black could trade off that bishop and be, be better for it, but why? This bishop is doing nothing. Wait him out, right? And sure enough, white gets, I got to do something. I got to do something. Uh, he is threatening because it's protected a fork. So you got to be wary of that. He is threatening a fork. And you got to decide what you're going to do. You're going to drop the bishop back. It was not doing anything right now, but it was, you know, it's nicely placed. But uh, you don't. You say you attack. I'll take your bishop. Nice counterattack, and you have two pieces attacking the pawn. Very good. Don't know if it's overly um, perfect, but uh, I like it. So let's see what would happen if he pushed, and he didn't. So good. I did took a peek to see what would happen if he had. Uh, he could take this way, threatening the rook, but then the rook steps up. Now the question is, does his knights get any life after all of that? And no, this pawn is going to fall. And his knight still, I mean, his knights could move, but you're going to probably take that pawn and your bishop is going to come to life. And so, yeah, I, I think you did well. I think that would work out well for you. So good. That was a nice move. Counterattack looking. If he pushes, you get to win the bishop. Very nice, Brandon. Very nice. Okay, so he, double, he chooses to double up your pawns. Nice taking that way. If he goes here, you get to take back. And then he's going to try to get his rooks here to bother you. Um, and unfortunately, you know, if you had your white bishop all the way on this side of the board, that pawn could sit there forever or you, it would be great. But you don't have that, but that's okay. Um, you're looking fine. So he does go for this. We talked, look, we talked about it. And I'm not worried about the knights. The knight doesn't really have a square to go to. The knight and the pawn, that'd be a sweet move. I don't know if that's what you did, but yes, it is. Nice move, Brandon. Double attack, attack both of them. His king is more open than yours. This pawn is annoying if he could get a queen in here, but he has no chance to get the queen in there because you still have the bishop, right? That's why we don't give away the fianchetto bishop. Nice, nice. Could have taken the pawn and then dropped back. And if you took the pawn, you would have still protected from the knight coming here to fork your king and, I mean, your queen and rook. But the, the bishop covers it anyway. You do give up the bishop though. Hmm. I don't like that you give up the bishop. Even with him taken back with the pawn, I, I, it feels like it's going to be troublesome for you to break oh, break uh, through. So I don't know. I don't know if I like you taking, I don't like it being here. I think if you just took here, that might have been better for you. I really do. I think that might have been better for you. Anyway, let's see what happens. All right, so he did not take, right? I think he should have just taken. And now he pins himself, so he can't take. He literally cannot take your bishop now. So that, I think, is just a really bad move. If this whole file were open and your rooks were coming over to scare him, I'd say, okay, I could see you trying to run away. But maybe even run away this way. But um, this knight holds the pawn. I don't know where he's going. The knight holds the pawn. Don't know where he's going. So if we look at it the other way, if he had taken... Uh, you could say check, right? I'm just looking to make sure. No, because if you say check here, the knight, he keeps the knight. The knight gets to stay. So really, you don't have anything better than taking back the knight. And now he can even say, let's get rid of your queen. No, he can't do that. I lied. He drops the, he drops the knight. He could move over. You're likely going to take, I'm going to assume, 
because you can't you want to get this pawn. You remember I talked to you a long time ago. I thought this would be your pawn break. Um, he also has this pawn, which I don't know if he can take the time to even take, right? So maybe back here, maybe he has the time because then his queen can come here. That could be a little tricky, right? Nice little tricky move there for him. Comes here first, threatens the rook. Say your rook takes. You can say, let's trade off the queens. And if he trades off the queens, look, he's got three pawns. Two of them are passed. Nope, sorry, one of them. This is the only one that's passed. There's a pawn here and there's a pawn here. But he'd have a passed pawn, more pawns. Um, I think he'd be winning. He could be winning. I might be missing something, but he could be winning. All right. Um, so you take the pawn. He can't, and now he real, all right? See, then he goes back. He's and and what I tell you guys a long time ago: when somebody goes and comes right back to the same square, that's like them admitting that they made a mistake, which is okay. It's better to admit it and then fix it than to be stubborn and say I'm not going to even, I'm not even going to let anybody know that I made that mistake. So I'm glad that he moved it back for his sake, but yeah, it wasn't uh, still wasn't best. So I. I don't know what to tell you. I'm not sure what that move does for you. I don't, know, I don't know what's going on with that move. So what you need to do is get your pieces active, right? So what, what piece is not in the battle? It would be nice to get this rook in the battle somehow. So you could actually start pushing this pawn if you wanted to because this knight doesn't want to move because you're going to get a check and maybe a mate, right? Check and mate, depending on where you go. Yeah, it's going to be mate and check and mate. Yeah. The bishop, I, I like it, Brandon, the bishop. Bring the bishop back down, pin that knight, and then if you trade off that knight, you get check, and then he's going to get away. But yeah, yeah, you get the point. Uh, and if you get here with that bishop, you're not only doing it this way, but then you have this hitting you too. So you take here first. King, queen, if the queen takes, you could take with the bishop with check and discover the attack on the queen. Oh, you just, it's, it's devastating. If you just say, I need one more piece, let me get my other pieces into the game. And how do you get the rook in the game? Unfortunately, this pawn is up. Otherwise, the rook could just slide over. But you could just start pushing that pawn because that pawn could do like the bishop could, but the bishop would be better because of the alignment. So yeah, we're, we're almost there. And look at this alignment. Two pieces on the knight. Two pieces on the knight. So uh, you would just have to find a place to put the bishop and then the knight could just run away. But anyway, let's see what happens. So king moves, not crazy about it. And this is why I didn't like uh, your situation before. But now it's different because the rook is here. So you now you could take back with the rook, not with the pawn. You won't drop this pawn. And now you have the rook threatening to come here and mate in two. So now you're threatening mate. Check. Only move mate. All right. So you're threatening mate. So he moves over there voluntarily. But you have two pieces on the knight. So the beauty of that whole situation was that you have a double attack. You have the threat of check and mate, and you're threatening the knight. So is there a way for him to keep the mate threat away and protect the knight? No. He has to move the knight, and where can he move the knight to? Let's see. Here he just loses it again. Here he doesn't lose it yet, but he does when you say check. Um, if he doesn't want to give away, even if he gives away the queen, he loses the knight. But more importantly, check, and then it's still mate. Uh, the knight can't go, you know, these don't do any good. That doesn't do any good. Oh, actually, in, in a weird way, um, this one stalls it maybe the longest, because if he takes that way, if you go here, he takes it with the knight. So that's funny. If he goes here, though, I mean, you know, I think you just go here, and now you have, you're, again, you're just devastating the situation. So beautiful, beautiful. So he takes, you take back with the rook, rook uh, king moves over, you take with the rook. Now, uh, just as a reminder, Brandon, here you could have taken with the queen almost, almost, right? Almost. Well, no, it is forcing because if he doesn't take and he moves his king, you get check and then mate again. So then he has, has to take and now look, you have a double attack again. And I know you're thinking, ah, I'm going to, why give up my queen? Because it's a cleaner, faster win. That's all. So just something for you to think about. As you get higher in strength and playing ability, you're going to start thinking, I can force a trade, have a double attack, and I have all the, everything's on, everything's going, everything's looking up roses for me. Uh, I'm, I'm ready to get rid of the queen. Queens could be dangerous even at this stage because queens can get perpetual checks against you. They're just annoying pieces. 
So I think in general it would be nice if you had gotten rid of that queen. So now we have a discovered check set up. Does he see it? He should see it. He ignores it. And you didn't do anything to take advantage of it, um, but you had to protect the bishop, right? No, you didn't have to. How could you have? Well, you could have taken with the queen, but you could have went here for one. On um, that way, if he takes with the queen, you take here. If he takes with Fitzdo, yeah, no, nope, that doesn't work. Yeah, I'll, I'll agree. I was saying, I was wondering if you had a check here, but then he just takes with the queen. So very good move, Brandon. Again, I was wrong twice already. This one analysis. No, good job, good job, excellent. Uh, let's see, moves the king, and uh, I mean the queen, and you have a free pawn while chasing the queen. Very good. Found it, and now you're threatening another pawn. So things are just going to start falling apart for him. Okay, brings the queen in, but mm, I don't know. Where's he going? Can't go there, 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 can't go here, can't go here, can't go here, can't go here. He has no moves with his queen. Very, very interesting. And by the way, you can actually pin the rook. You just pin the rook. Say, give me that rook. And you went over here. Okay, I'm not, sh again, not 100% sure what it's doing over here. I'm not sure. Um, I would have went here and said, I'm going to get a rook for a bishop. And then after I get that rook, my rook might come down here and we're going to checkmate you again. So I'm not sure about this move. It actually gives the queen some hope and more so some hope here, right? You're giving the queen chances to check you and chase you around. So yeah, I, I, I'm not crazy about that. Uh, not crazy about this. I think he missed. I think he has to just come back here and make you go someplace else. And you can't go here because he would take your rook. So you maybe you have to go here. And once you go there, then he could come here to try to threaten this pawn maybe. Uh, eating this pawn is a bad idea. Uh, you, you have too much firepower coming at him. Way too much firepower. So uh, I think taking that pawn and that pawn, all a mistake. And I don't think you need to take that pawn. We just talked about it. You go here. This this should end the game. Uh, I'm not even sure what he's going to do. He might have to come back here. Um, you could take. Uh, you could take with the queen. But you still have two rooks. And remember all those pawns we saw? Remember when I said if you take queen takes queen, you'd have all those pawns if you took with the queen and threatened check and... Now look, he's eating up your pawns and his queen is still being a pain. So yeah, I would have loved it if you had um, not worried about the pawns. And he's still looking for pawns. And it's like you're looking for pawns. Um, and he's got this one. I don't know if he sees it. No, he, he missed it. And then he gave away his queen. After all of this time, you guys played this great of a game. Solid. I mean, what, he gave away one free piece, I think, at, uh, with it was tricky, if I remember correctly, and he misses this? This is sad. This is sad. I'm just sorry. To me, this is sad. I mean, he had good chances. I mean, you, you have to go here, check. You could try to come out here. Uh, I, just, I just feel like he missed opportunities. Here, you don't want to leave the rook, so you're going to go here or here. And he could just keep, I mean, he's going to get perpetual check, I think. I think he could perpetual check you. Yep, and instead he does the Botez Gambit. Yeah, it's funny how uh, two sisters that play online, uh, they, ha they have a Gambit named after them anytime you give away your queen. Uh, it's just that that's the popularity that they have right now is that, you know, I'm trying to get Murph to be a, uh, whoa, whoa, Brandon, what, 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 what? Brandon, what, 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 what? What was that? And now he sees it. Brandon, free candy, man. You can't miss the free candy. You did have 25 seconds. I think you had enough time to find that free candy. <laughs> yes, you're right. It does upset me. <laughs> Only because I'm rooting for you, Brandon. You're part of the family now. So, uh, you know, you, you, I feel like you're one of my students, even though we haven't done a lesson. But we're kind of doing an analysis. So, yeah, that's obviously a blunder, Brandon. Obviously. And, and then he blund he's not blundering, but I don't know if he thinks he's going to win with the uh, queen uh, and two rooks against the queen, two rooks, and a bishop. He's not probably going to win, so this is probably just bad. But anyway, you can't take this way, but you could take this way, my friend. Oh, I don't think you I think you still had a win right here. So, yeah, you had 21 seconds left. You can't take with the bishop because of checkmate. Right, so you just can't. You have to see that the queen takes 
part of the rook. Actually, the rook takes two. It's checkmate. So you can't take because of checkmate. So what do you have to do? You have to find another move. So did you find it? Check. Check. He only has uno move. One move. He has only one move. What do you do now? Check. He can't put the rook in front. Can't put the rook in front. He has to take. Check. He can't put the rook in front. Has to put the rook in front. Has to put the rook in front. Now, if you really want to take, go for it. Right? Now you could go for it and you just say, which pawn did you want to win? Pick a pawn. Right? Pick a pawn. And after you win the pawn, let's come down here and mate him. Right? That's one option. Or you could just start pushing the pawns because he can't stop you. He can push pawns, but you got a rook back here. You have this game won, Brandon. You have this won. Even here, even here, you have this won. He should have went for perpetual check. He should have just started perpetually checking you. This is a mistake. It uncovers this the last thing he needed. The last thing protecting that king. One pawn. He's boxed himself in. And he just gave you the game. And we didn't uh, take it. Mm. That hurts. That hurts. You could still take here with the queen, by the way. The other way you win the game. Flat out. Game over. But you could have went here with the queen. Because, you know, it protects everything. But again, he still has perpetuals. So again, taking with the queen would have done it for you. Ah, no, Brandon. You got to remember, you got to stay next to the rook. And he still didn't do Oh my gosh, he didn't do it, Brandon. You still had chances. And then you saw it. But so once you saw it, though, you shouldn't do it. Only if you, because you can maybe get some checks of your own to give him trouble, uh, you know. You, you might want to try checking anyway, because this is going to fall apart. So, yep, can't do that. That's checkmate. Remember, the rook holds it. So you definitely cannot, you definitely cannot take the pawn. Uh, you, you have to check. And now you might have a perpetual, right? Forced move here. Oh, not a perpetual, but look, you're still, look at, look at this late in the game. You're still in the game. Queen has to take, take. What does he do? He's got to try to stop this pawn. So what does he do? Maybe he does this. And you say, okay, and he said, and he starts pushing maybe? No, he'd be smart to get behind that pawn. And then your king can get up, and he's got four pawns to three now, but you've got two pa three passers, but he does too. He has four passers. But at least you'd still be in the game, and with the few seconds you have left, you never know, right? 14 versus 13 seconds, you never know. But you can't do this. So this is why a long time. You need to look and learn to see one move mates. 13 seconds left. And he's got a one move mate. I mean, game over. And he's prolonging the game. And he finds it. Okay, he finds it finally. All right. Uh, that was a very instructive game, Miranda. You did great until you got down to about 30 seconds. Once you got down to 30 seconds, you started blundering all over the place. And um, you said it was a 5 plus 5, right? So you had, believe it or not, you had time. And critical points in the game, you've got to think and take your time and play by those principles. So here you had a minute. Right here you had a minute. Good move here. Um, he goes here. You have to. You have a minute. You have 57 seconds. You have to say, okay, he's got those squares, but they're all covered. I can pin alignment. All you should be looking at is, I got alignment here, guys. I got alignment. I'm going for alignment because he can't even sack here thinking he could take with the rook because the rook can't move. So he can't sack, and he's got really nothing after that. You know, you go here, he's got nothing. If he comes here with his queen, you're like, that's okay. We'll say check. We'll just say check. And now he's got to he's got to take with the queen because otherwise, your your um, rook's gonna take his queen if he takes with the rook. So now you just you could just take if you want, or you could stay here. You don't even have to take. Take another pawn if you want. And now you have. Two passers, and he can't really stop you from trading queens. He could come here. That's nice. You get to go here, and you're threatening mate again. By that, I mean you go here. He go here, check. If he puts the rook up, you got mate. So what does he have to do? He has to put the queen back, because if he puts the rook back, you've got mate. 
And so now you could start pushing pawns if you want. Or not that one. <laughs> that would break your queen's protection. But you can get your rook into the game. You could uh, you can you could take your time and push this pawn, or you could just trade queens, which would be the easiest check. Look at this. Now you could have taken with the king, right? So let's be fair. He he could have and should have taken with the king. But you still now you're you're golden. This pawn has a pawn to fight him. You have two pass pawns. He has no pass pawns. You can even put your rook here and get rid of that pawn. Your rook goes here. These pawns go down. You have two rooks against one. Easy win. Easy win. All right. Thanks for letting us go over that game, though. That was that was uh, unexpected. All right. I, I have time for a couple of games if anyone wants to play. We're supposed to be playing games tonight, but uh, Brandon talked me into looking at one of his games. All right. Good night, M.A. Take it easy. Hey, and Dolo Bender, if you're here, thanks for the follow. You followed yesterday when I wasn't even streaming. I appreciate it. I appreciate getting follows when I'm not even here. That's just fun. Oh, yeah, anybody. Anybody, uh, whoever's first, Brandon, um, King, whoever whoever does first. Yeah, you did miss the simul, so you should have the priority. But you got to challenge me. Um, if you don't remember how, I actually made a bot for that. There's a bot for that. I'm getting better. I'm getting better. I need to be able to pull my chat out and put it up here on my big screen so I can look at my big screen and chat with you guys. And I can't pull it out of the actual Twitch um, app, but if I did the stream manager, I could. So I need to see if I can go live from the stream manager because if I can go live from the stream manager tomorrow, I'm going to pull the chat out and put it up where my eyes are. Um, so, where do you see about other uh, over-the-board tournaments? So, Brandon, uh, we said uh, we're going to let uh, King get to play first. So, I'm waiting for King's uh, challenge because that would be only fair. And you did 10-0. What is this 10-0? I need five seconds. I told you I need five seconds. So, um, Chris, since I'm showing the whole screen, this might work out. You go to uh, one place. An uh, easy place to go is uschess.org. And that's where you would, you'd, for a rated over the board tournament, you're going to have to join. If you join at the tournament site, uh, it's got to be a plus five at least, uh, King. If you play, if you join at the tournament, they usually can give you a discount because they get a kickback of $3 for their club. And if they don't care about the $3, they'll give you the $3. But otherwise, oh, you already joined the USCF? Okay, great. So then you just need to play, right? You need to say, uh, you go here and it says international events. No, nope. upcoming tournaments. That would be a place to go. And you can also look for clubs in here someplace too. And then, of course, you could just search, right? So um, I don't, you don't have to tell me where you live. But let's say, uh, by the way, guys, uh, I'm, I'm a Notre Dame fan because I work there. So I could say chess near Notre Dame. Oops, I missed an M in there. And you could just search because, again, it is pretty popular. And so, look, the Fighting Irish has a uh, chess club. It's not very um, active. But you can find, and you look, and you look, and there is one in Elkhart. There's one in uh, South Bend. There's one in Mishawaka. So you would find them by searching that way also. Uh, but, yeah, USCF, especially if you're already rated, I'd go with that. Hey, King, all right. We're in. Go for it, buddy. So, um, Chris, again, over-the-board tournaments, though, have been kind of on hold because of COVID. So I don't know if it's going to happen. I don't know when it's going to happen. Okay, standard. Good, good. Woo! Yeah, well, okay. No fried liver for you, huh? Don't want the fried liver, he says. Check, check, check. Move around, move around. Check, check, check. Move around. I don't know. We'll go this way. I'm not sure what I want to do with that one. All right, so we have a pin. We like pins. We love pins. Oh, King, I don't remember if I've ever played you. I, I, I'm taking this as you, King, because it's Krish, but I think that was you, right? I think last time we checked and that was you. So I'm hoping I got the right person uh, lined up I'm playing. Uh, yep, we'll go with that. I have to think sometimes. Sometimes I play too fast. 
and to slow down you move too fast you got to make the morning last yeah not very good at singing either yeah it's it's uh but there are uh, find a town in virginia find the nearest club and the clubs will be the ones that are running the tournaments uh you know if you're way out in the woods you might not you know um have uh tournaments by the way you could become a tournament director club tournament director requires nothing but reading the rule book and saying you did and turning in uh like whatever amount of money and become a tournament director and you could start holding your own tournaments with all the other people in your area and you could be the one that created the club and got the tournaments going you could be the person all right um what do I want to do about that? I, I was liking my bishop, really I was. Uh oh, somebody's calling me, but I'm not talking right now. Oh, it's my daughter, my other daughter. I'm going to see if I can connect with my phone. Hello? Hello? I guess I can't. Hello? I guess I can't. It doesn't work the way I wanted it to. Sorry, guys. Anyway, pressing on. Got to remember, playing a game. Playing a game. All right. Calling me the better way on my cell phone. Hello? How are you? Give me a second. I gotta get my uh, thingies to worky. Uh, one second. Don't worry about the time, guys. I'll catch up. Oh, what happened to the call? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? It says you're on the phone, but I don't see it on my phone phone. It's annoying. It's annoying, honey. I'm trying to get you on my... Here we go. I think we got you now. You there? Hello? Oh, so annoying. Yeah, I can hear you. How you doing? You don't sound okay. Yeah, you don't sound good. What's wrong? Uh, guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna be back, guys. Um, hold on. I'm gonna.
Okay, guys, sorry. I'm going to definitely be stopping after this game. Uh, I'm going to have to um, leave you guys. I am very sorry for that, but uh, we're, we're about quitting time anyway, but got something going on with uh, family. So I'm going to be bouncing out as soon as this is over, which I think it's almost over. I think. All right, guys, uh, thank you so much for everything as always. I'm going to see if there's uh, someone we want to um, raid. Uh, Uh, let's see, the only one online that I normally follow, oh, you know, The Apprentice, I tried to follow her before. Let's, let's follow, uh, check out Velcro Dot. Um, I've watched her before, it's, it's interesting, not bad. Um, she's friendly. Uh, let's see, um, yep. All right, so we will raid Velcro Dot. Hopefully you guys, uh, like her stream. And you could tell me if it's any good. I thought it was okay. And uh, hey, Murph, I'm about to leave. I got a uh, family emergency, so I'll be uh, bouncing out. And uh, thanks for the game. Good game. Good game, Chris. Uh, good game, uh, King. And I will see you guys later. I will set up the raid. And uh, have a good night, guys. We will see you tomorrow, maybe for Spanish. All righty, guys. It was good. It was appreciated. Good night tonight. We'll be going there in four seconds. All right, have a good night, guys.